Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. This is uh, a video where I'm going to explain question number nine from the January 2020 International A-Level P3 paper. And in this question, we have a question about trig identities. Here we're told to express F theta, which is five cosine theta minus four sine theta in the form R cosine theta plus alpha. So we've got to take F theta, which is five cosine theta minus four sine theta and we got to make it in this form r cosine theta plus alpha okay so what we need to do in order to to do this we need to find the value of r and alpha okay and r is greater than zero and r is a constant as alpha is and alpha is a angle between zero and pi over two radians we need to find the exact value of r and the value of alpha in radians to three decimal places. So what I need to do is I need to um, kind of compare the coefficients of the left side and the right side. I can't really do that right now until I expand this. Now this does not expand by just multiplying cosine by theta. It doesn't make sense. Cosine on its own doesn't mean anything. So this is like cosine of this angle theta plus alpha. It's like this theta plus alpha is an integral part of it. They're not like separate things that you can multiply with each other. It's not like x times theta plus alpha, where you can say x alpha, x theta plus x alpha. X on, its, x on its own is something. Cosine on its own doesn't mean anything, right? So this is like cosine of this whole angle. In order to expand this, we need to use what are called the compound angle formulae, or the addition formulae sometimes they're called, which are found in your P3-4 um, uh, formula book. For P3, you'll find it there. If you look... In the formula book, I've got like a snapshot of the part that we need. You'll find formula that look like this. Okay, these are the type of formula that we need. Now we need the one which has cosine a plus b, all right? Because this is cosine something plus something. So in our formula book, the a is like the theta and the b is like the alpha. Okay, if you look at the comparison, so it's cosine of a plus b. So we need that that form of it, and that splits up as cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b. So this is going to be r times, I'm going to have cosine of that first angle, which is cosine um, theta times cosine of the second angle, alpha. Now if there's a plus here, when there's a plus here, that becomes a minus. So it's minus sine theta sine alpha. Okay, so we've used the formula book now to uh, use this and expand that. So I can get rid of this now. Okay, so now what we can do is we can now compare the coefficients on either side of this identity. So you have 5 cosine theta minus 4 sine theta equals r cosine theta cosine alpha minus r, sorry, because the r is multiplying by both of them, r sine theta sine alpha. Okay, so don't forget the r on both of them. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare the coefficients on both sides. So I see I have a cosine theta here and I have a cosine theta here. Um, and so on the left side for, for that particular term, we see that the cosine theta, all right, if we compare the cosine thetas, we can see that the coefficient is 5. And on this side, the coefficient of cosine theta is r cosine alpha. And here for the sine thetas, we can see that the uh, coefficient of sine theta here is 4. And the coefficient of sine theta here is r sine alpha. So what we can do here is we can say, if we compare the sine thetas, we have on the left side 4, there's a minus here and a minus here, so I don't have to write the minus, equals, and I can put r sine alpha. So 4 is the same as r sine alpha. Okay, so that r sine alpha is the same as 4. Now I can get somewhere. Now there's a couple of ways we can continue from here. Um, some people like to uh, square both of these equations and add them together and use the identity sine squared alpha plus cosine squared alpha equals 1. I like to make a triangle, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make like a, a, a right angle triangle. Okay, I'm going to say, okay, I know that this is alpha, and I know that the, you know, um, 5 equals r cosine alpha, so I can say from this, I can say from this that um, cosine alpha is 5 over r, Okay, so cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And I can say from this one that the sine of alpha equals 4 over r. So the sine of alpha is opposite over 
hypotenuse. So you can see that you've got this situation here. So we can find what R is. Because by Pythagoras' theorem, we can say R is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides. So R is equal to the square root of 16 plus 25, which is the square root of, that's going to give you 35 plus 6, which is 41. So R is equal to the square root of 41. We leave it in this form because it says give the exact value of R, so we leave it in third form. And then if you want to find what alpha is, well, it's pretty simple. We can just use this right angle triangle. We can use, for example, tan. Okay, we can say the tan of alpha is equal to opposite over adjacent, which is 4 over 5. And we have to find that in angles to three decimal places. So we're going to make sure that our calculator is in um, radian mode. Okay, we've got to find in radians. So we say inverse tan, so shift tan of 4 over 5. So we have 4 over 5, and that gives us our angle in radians. So you get alpha equals 0 0.67474. Um, 0 0.67474. Let's just make sure that's correct. 674, 674.74, and it continues. So we want three decimal places. So we can say 0 0.675 to three decimal places. That's what it's, the instruction was. Okay, and we have to now uh, write it in this form. So we can say F theta is equal to R. Oops, sorry, we know what R is. R cosine, I'll just write it like this, cosine theta plus alpha. So we can say, therefore, F theta is equal to the square root of 41 times the cosine of theta plus 0 0.675 radians. And there we have the answer to part A. Okay, so I'm going to uh, take a little snapshot of this because I might need it. Okay, in the next part of the question. So let's take that to the next part of the question. Part B, and in Part B it tells us. Let's make this a bit smaller. Okay, so this is what we found f theta is equal to. Okay, this is going to help us with this part of the question. It says the curve with equation y equals cosine theta is transformed onto the curve with equation y equals f theta by a sequence of two transformations. Okay, given that the first transformation is a stretch and the second a translation, describe fully the transformation that is a stretch. Okay, so here there are two transformations. One is inside the function and one is outside the function. The one inside the function is where you add something to the whole, um, to the angle inside the function. Okay, this represents basically, um, so this represents f theta plus 0 0.65. So you've basically added um, something to the angle in the inside the function okay and the other one is where you have you know root 41 times f theta okay so this is where you're multiplying the whole function by something okay so if you describe given that the first transformation is a stretch and the second is a translation it says uh, describe fully the transformation that is a stretch so the stretch is going to be for part one okay it's a it's, it's outside the function, so it's of the form a times f of x. So you can say, therefore, it's a vertical, a vertical stretch. All right, so you have to mention what type of stretch it is. You could say a stretch parallel to the y-axis if you wanted to. Okay, a vertical stretch. It's, it's going to be, you know, all, all the y values are going to be multiplied by root 41, basically. And it is um, stretch factor. Okay, stretch factor. is equal to the square root of 41. Okay, that's part one. Pretty simple. And part two says, okay, um, given that the, the second is a translation, well, the translation is this thing inside the function, and that's like f x plus a. So this is a horizontal translation. Okay, a horizontal translation. Okay, um, and you could give a vector for this. You could give it as a vector as um, it's going horizontally. Now, it's going to go the opposite direction. 
Okay, F, fx plus a that represents the translation of minus a zero. It goes to the left. Okay, it goes the opposite direction. So this is going to be minus zero point six seven five zero. You could give it as a vector like this. Okay, or you can say horizontal translation of zero point six seven five units to the left. Okay, because it's being added, you go you do the opposite. Okay, so that's uh, the answer for part B. Pretty simple. Doesn't need much of an explanation. It's just like two marks. So something simple like that is fine. Then it says part C. Um, again, I think I need the. Uh, I need that same. Whoops! What happened there? Okay, let me just get it from here. I need this with me for this question. I think. So let's take this across. That was our answer for part A. Okay, so it says, given that g theta is 90 over 4 plus f theta squared, find the range of g. Okay, so that means we've got to find the lowest and highest values that this can possibly be. Okay, so you have 90 over 4. Now, f theta is 41 or root 41 times the cosine of theta plus 0 0.675. So f theta all squared is going to be 41 times cosine of, you can, I can write it like this just to make it clearer, 0 0.675, this thing all squared. Okay, now the maximum value that 41 cosine theta plus 0 0.675 squared we can ever have is 41. So the maximum value of this expression here is 41 because this has a maximum value of 1 and a minimum value of minus 1 when this is, when this is 1 okay you're gonna have 41 times 1 squared which is 41 um, when this is minus 1 you'll also have 41 times uh, 1 squared which is also 41 so the lowest value of this is minus 1 but it won't give you a different value for this so we have to think the minimum value of, of f theta squared because, you know, whatever comes out here negative is going to get squared anyway. So it won't make a difference. It will be the same value. So if I put minus 1 as this minimum value of here, it will get squared. It will be 41 times 1, which will also be 41. So the minimum value of this is going to be when this is 0. This can be 0. This can range between minus 1 and 1. The value of cosine of any angle can range between minus 1 and 1. Okay, it can range between minus 1 and 1. So it can also reach 0. Now when this is 0, you get 41 times 0 squared, which is 0. So the minimum value of f theta squared, so we can say f theta all squared, okay, the maximum value of this is 41, and the minimum value of this is 0. Okay, so you've got to think about that here. When you have 90 um, uh, plus 4, 90 over 4 plus... 41 okay that's going to give you the smallest possible value for g theta because you've got 90 divided by something that's uh, as big as it can possibly be so when you're dividing something by a large number you're going to get a smaller answer so the minimum value for g theta is going to be 90 over 45 which is 2 and the maximum value for g theta is going to be when you're dividing 90 by the smallest it can possibly be and the smallest this can possibly be is when f you got a zero instead of when when you got the smallest value of f theta which f theta squared which is zero so g theta the 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 maximum value is going to be 90 over 9 which is equal to 10 so this is going to give you 90 over 9 sorry not 90 over 9 90 over 4 i, I can't wait i can't read my own writing there so here we have a 4. Um, so it's going to be 90 over 4 plus 0, which is 90 over 4. So 4 goes into 90 22.5 um, times. Just make sure of that. 90 divided by 4 gives you 22.5. Okay, so the maximum value of g theta is 90 divided by 4, which is 22.5. So we can say g theta ranges between 2 and 
22.5 that is the range of values of g theta okay because you can see this will it will never be this will never be negative this will always be positive but the highest it can get to is 41 when you square this you get 41 as a maximum value and when you um even when it becomes when even where the cosine theta whether the cosine of this angle is minus one or whether the cosine of this angle is plus one you'll still get that same value of 41 because this mine if it's a minus one it gets squared um it becomes plus plus one so it'll still be 41 but the minimum value that this f theta squared can ever be is when cosine theta plus 0 0.675 is equal to zero then you have 41 times zero which is zero okay so the minimum is zero for this okay if it wasn't squared if it wasn't squared it would be the minimum value would be 41 and the, oh, root 41 and the maximum the maximum value would be root 41 and the minimum value would be minus root 41 because it's squared you got to square the root 41 and you got to square whatever comes out here okay if it's minus one it's going to be squared if it's plus one it'll be it'll get squared so it'll give you the same thing for the maximum so the minimum therefore is going to be when this is equal to zero okay when this becomes zero then the whole thing becomes zero because you have 41 times zero okay and then as i mentioned the maximum value of a fraction is when you divide the the if you divide by a the smallest possible number you get the biggest possible answer and if you divide by the ma the biggest possible denominator then you'll get the the smallest possible answer okay so to find the minimum value of g theta the 90 here is fixed the 4 is fixed the thing that can change is this it's you got to use its maximum value to give you the biggest possible denominator to give you the smallest answer for g theta and you got to use its minimum value which is zero to give you the smallest the biggest possible value of g theta so if this this part became zero you have 90 over four so there's the answer for this question i hope that was understandable and clear and um i will be placing other questions from this paper in the playlist that you should find in this area over here and other questions from this topic of trigonometry and trig identities from p3 you'll find in the playlist also one of the plates on this side and you will have um, a um, subscribe kind of icon over here you can click on if you want to subscribe to my channel and a card up here will take you to maybe one of the other p3 papers i've done um, thank you for watching i hope you understood and i'll see you again soon